come and ride along with Hawkeye and Genie, as they continue their journey on the road in a converted cargo van, visiting cities, communities, towns, and other places of interest to determine what is really going on in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Who is in business and who is not? What is the new normal way to live? Then report back to you with these videos. That is what Hawkeye's Tales and Trails is all about. I am Delmer, the narrator. Okay, this place is called Gates of the Mountains, Montana. Episode 45 is about their ride at the Gates of the Mountains. On July 19th, 1805, Meriwether Lewis wrote, This evening we entered much the most remarkable clefts that we have yet seen. These clefts rise from the water's edge on either side perpendicularly to the height of 1,200 feet. Every object here wears a dark and gloomy aspect. The towering and projecting rocks in many places seem ready to tumble on us. The river appears to have forced it its way through this immense body of solid rock for the distance of 5 3 4 miles and where it makes its exit below has thrown on either side vast columns of rocks mountains high. The river appears to have worn a passage just the width of its channel or 150 yards. It is deep from side to side nor is there in the first 3 miles of this distance a spot except one of a few yards in extent on which a man could rest the sole of his foot. Several fine springs burst out at the water's edge from the interstices of the rocks. It happens fortunately that although the current is strong it is not so much so but what it may be overcome with the oars for there is no possibility of using either the cord or setting pole. It was late in the evening before I entered this place and was obliged to continue my route until some time after dark before I found a place sufficiently large to encamp my small party, at length such an one occurred on the lard. From the singular appearance of this place I called it the Gates of the Rocky Mountains. Wave you guys. <laughs> Alright, don't. Voyager. My name is Tim. I'm the pilot guide and storyteller as you go down the Missouri River. The plan is to go down river about six miles, turn on, come back up. We'll be out on the water an hour, 45 minutes to two hours. Your life jackets are inside the seats that are marked, seat tops flip forward inside of the life jackets. You don't need to put them on there, there in case of emergency. There's a bathroom on a boat, it's called the head, in my port aft corner for land lovers, captain left in the back of the boat. The trick with the bathroom, it's an electric flush valve, so the button is up on the wall with a sign above. For some reason, people lock themselves in. <laughs> You can know, always just pound on the door and eventually we're right for <laughs> This is an all-weather boat, uh, so when it's hot, you're going to get hot. This body of water we start off on is called Upper Holter Lake. It's also the Missouri River. In 1918, you know, it's it's Holter Dam water. was built forming Holter flow. Lake. The water level of the Missouri River in the gates was raised approximately 14 feet. The Gates of the Mountains Wilderness in the United States is in the state of Montana. Created by an act of Congress in 1964, the wilderness is managed by Helena National Forest. A day-use campground near the Gates of the Mountains, Meriwether Picnic Site, is named in honor of Meriwether Lewis. Gates of the Mountains Wilderness was the site of the 1949 Man Gulch Fire, which claimed the lives of 13 firefighters, and which was the subject of Norman McLean's book Young Men and Fire. Gates of the Mountain U.S. Wilderness Areas does not allow motorized or mechanized vehicles, including bicycles. Although camping and fishing are allowed with proper permit, no roads or buildings are constructed and there is also no logging or mining, in compliance with the 1964 Wilderness Act. Wilderness areas within National Forests and Bureau of Land Management areas also allow hunting in season. Great towering walls of limestone still stand guard over the river. Bighorn sheep and mountain goats scamper in the rocks high above the water. Ospreys, eagles, bald and golden, vultures and falcons, 
Peregrine and Prairie, still soar on the updrafts. The canyon is also home to otters, deer, squirrels, ermine, beaver, mountain lions, black bears, and other wild creatures. The life list for bird species is over 120 right now. The 120-minute boat cruise starts at their marina, just three miles off Interstate 15 in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains between Helena and Great Falls, Montana. Aboard a comfortable open-air boat, covered in case of rain, you will glide through magnificent country Meriwether Lewis would still recognize if he could return. From the vessel you can see Man Gulch, the site of the raging forest fire that killed 13 smoke jumpers, August 5, 1949. This tragedy was the main subject matter of Norman McLean's book Young Men and Fire. The story of Man Gulch is one of the more interesting stories told by the guide and pilot. Near Man Gulch the pilot will hug the shoreline to give you a look at Indian pictographs painted on the rock wall. Proof that indigenous people lived here long before Meriwether named it the Gates of the Mountains. The tour's main attraction, though, is the inexhaustible scenery, wooded slopes, rugged rock formations, and the placid beauty of the timeless Missouri. I am Delmer, the narrator. Good day. Good job, Captain. 